is in the making and the dream of many who saw the future of rallying firmly entrenched in the modern two-wheel drive cars emerging from all manufacturers. After the loss of four-wheel drives from the outright championship, a record number of teams have fronted for this new era of competition in a mix of experience that will make it one of the most exciting and unpredictable seasons on record. Appropriately, it all begins in the nation's capital, a place where rallying has its heart. Three years ago, Honda upped the ante entering the front drive Type R Civic to showcase these high revving race inspired rally cars. Now, 18 two wheel drive competitors have assembled in anticipation of round one in Canberra for this new era of competition. Ross Duncan had won his first three championships in two wheel drives and he's followed this latest development with interest. This year's East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship is shaping up to be one of the best in years. With the buying public changing to smaller compact cars, the ARC has decided to switch to a two-wheel drive competition only. This has resulted in a resurgence in competitor interest. Three manufacturers have registered for this year's competition. Honda is being joined by Renault and also Ford. There is also a number of privateer competitors, one in a Mazda and two in VW Polos. This has set the scene for the most makes and models that we have seen in decades. Now throw into the mix a number of Nissans, including two brand new 370Zs, and we are in for a very exciting year. Their form will be hard to pick. While the Zs Dunker refers to won't be ready until next round in WA, the field is wide and varied. With the exception of Honda, the field is full of experienced drivers in unfamiliar and untested cars, and even some inexperienced drivers behind the wheel of a mix of right and left hand drive rally cars. Perhaps that's where the advantage lies for the defending two wheel drive champion Eli Evans, who has three seasons under his belt in the Honda Mark. He and Glenn Weston enter this season in a lightened Honda Jazz, eager to back up their inaugural win last year. We put the car in a diet, we shed a few kilos, which has come up on the scales pretty well now. We're, we're weighing in at about 1160 now, so that's a big difference from last year. Um, different spring rates, different, different shocks, different valving and stuff, just to try and get some more front end grip, to try and make the grip better than what we have. You know, we've only got front wheel drive pulling us through the corners, so we've got to try and make the most of that. And, and we've made some improvements now, and on the stopwatch it looks really good, so um, and that's on a test stage, but we're yet to see in the forest yet. His teammate, Mark Petter, made the jump to two wheel drive last year also to try and gain some advantage in handling the two-wheel drive jazz. Second, in 2012, he and Claire Ryan returned to stiffer competition this season. Renault Sport enters Australia after an absence of several decades in rally in the capable hands of a man almost single-handedly responsible for the shift to two-wheel drive. Back behind the wheel after two seasons at the helm of the ARC, Scott Petter is eager to show off the South African Renault Clio. Yeah, the car's really, really good. You know, there's no reason why the car can't come in this weekend. Uh, if it's off the pace, uh, it'll, be, it'll be more me than the car. And you know, it's but as the championships proved over the years, it's about consistency. And uh, you know, maybe the person that, that wins this event is not necessarily the person that's going to win the championship. So it's about accruing points. And you know, certainly uh, Eli, Brendan, and and Elfin will be the pace setters, I think. And hopefully, we're there to pick up the scraps. His teammate is young Tom Wilde from WA, who has the internationally experienced Bill Hayes alongside. A team without form together, but not one to be underestimated. There's still bits of the car that I don't know, there's still areas, you know, if it gets into the big slides and stuff like that, that I haven't been there before, so where the other guys have done that. So I've just got to play it neat and tidy and yeah, try and finish with a good result. Last year's winner of the four-wheel drive championship fronts in another South African car, a Volkswagen Polo. Michael Bowden is apprehensive about such a major change in such a short space of time. It's a new car, we've only had it a week and uh, there's a lot of little things we don't know about it. So uh, it's going to be one of those weekends that just, just keep chipping away at it and hopefully we'll 
get to the finish with a few points. Mick Patton is driving a second VW. The Repco rally team making the transition from four-wheel drive Subaru to two-wheel drive Polo in just a fortnight. We're both working really hard together to try and make it both work as best we can. He's in the same boat as us, only picking up the car last week. Um, so it's a matter of learning as fast as we can and making sure we can sort of get straight onto it, but, but also having that reliability in the product. But as it stands, the product's great, looks fantastic, goes really well. We're just going to try and make sure we can learn to drive it again. Ford is represented here this weekend, the innate motorsport team running the R2 spec 1600 Fiesta in the hands of Adrian Coppen with regular co-driver Tim Batten. Another junior from last year, Steve McKenzie, is also in a privately backed Fiesta, but he has the experienced Ben Searcy alongside him for round one. The rallyschool.com.au Mazda 2 is back after several appearances in 2012, but not with Simon Evans. Brendan Reeves has secured the drive and brings with him valuable international experience. Yeah, I've been doing the WRC Academy, so getting that world experience. I've com been competing in a Ford Fiesta R2, so it's the Junior World Rally Championship and it's been a great experience for me, especially on pace note and, and pushing against Alfred Evans, who's here to compete against us this weekend. Elfin Evans has been brought out from the UK by Ford Innate Motorsport to highlight just how competitive the smaller capacity cars can be. The Welshman, winner of last year's WRC Academy, is keen to show what they can do. It's obviously uh, you know, difficult. We are as a different, uh, different specification of car. You know, We're lacking probably between 50 and 70 horsepower, which obviously does make a big difference. Um, but like you say, you know, the package is fantastic. Um, for what it is. Um, I think it's the best class R2 car out there. Um, we know it very well, very experienced with it, and uh, obviously it's in very difficult conditions out there today. A lot of grip in some places and, and nearly zero in other places. Rear-wheel drive cars are represented this round. Two Nissan Silvias in the hands of Will Orders and Jack Monkhouse threaten the front drive party, but neither driver is over-optimistic about their success. The new G2 regulations are a little bit restrictive. Um, we've got a few more freedoms, but also, you know, our cars are quite a bit heavier than the G2 cars. But, you know, horsepower's up, you know, there's so many variables um, between the G2 cars and the PRC cars. So, you know, only time will tell and, and hopefully we can be right amongst it. It's a lot wider and, and rear wheel driver wants to step out and the road's very narrow, so you can't afford to step the back wheels out and, and slide her into the trees. So we just have to try and keep it tidy. The Petters Power Stage kicked off the weekend's competition. Not all the favourites made the cut. Atrocious weather and a rough track had much to do with who would make it and who wouldn't. Elfin Evans set the pace in the Coates higher entry and despite the efforts of Mark Petter, Jack Monkhouse and Tom Wilde, the R2 spec Fiesta remained in the Petters staging area. It was Brendan Reeves who finally edged him out with a brilliant display of driving in the Mazda G2. As the fastest qualifier, Eli Evans ran last. Two moments in the first sector dropped him out of contention. And despite a good comeback in the next two sectors, the Mazda 2 finished the first day's competition on top, bagging $500 and the first championship points before the season has even kicked off. And that season kicks off on the other side of the break. Back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship, coming to you from the National Capital Rally in Canberra. It might have been the Mazda 2 on top in the Pedders Power Stage, but the first car on the road was the Honda of Eli Evans as the quickest qualifier. Set in the forest near Tidbinbilla, high winds should have dried out the first two stages from the torrential rains that drenched the region two days ago. Whatever the tyre choice, the road conditions are short totally six. different to Recky two right days ago. 30. Double caution, short right seven, slip left four. Short right eight. 50 care, right three, slight camber. Left three long. Oh. You're right. Yeah, all good. 
but all is not good. Eli was banking on a drier road and shot the Jazz in the closer pattern Kumo 900s, hoping for the advantage. It backfires and he finishes a second a K slower than the leading car over the 16 kilometre first stage. Brendan Reeves starts the day as he finished yesterday, fast and clean, winning by six seconds despite a suspect clutch. 40, Brow and five right sharp. Brow and five right sharp. 50, flat seven left. 40, flat eight right up, break 50, danger. Five left, very short, sharp, danger five left, very short, sharp, into five right, short, into five left, rock in middle, then eight right, rock in middle, eight right, into six left, don't, into six right, medium, break early, 40, three right, sharp, three right, sharp. Five right sharp, keep in, into, five left, long, don't cut, and slot, easy, four right, 120. It's the R2 Fiesta of Elfin Evans, not Eli Evans, who is second fastest across the 16 kilometre stage. The Welsh driver showing just why he took out the WRC Academy title last year. And open six right, and open four left opens, and continues long over crest, keeping on exit, and flat right, and flat left, 30, three right plus, in over crest, 80, latish, nine left, don't cut, 50, slot, flat left over crest, continues, very long keeping, over crest, into four right plus, 80, slippy, open three right over crest. If ever there was proof of just how competitive the 1600 Ford Fiesta can be, this is it. Will Orders is another six seconds behind Evans. The open, drying, hard base roads suiting the heavier rear drive Nissan. His cousin, Scott Pedder, is just a second behind, though, in his first full special stage since his untimely departure in South Australia two years ago. 30, 7 left, 200. Pedder and Dale Moskett account for themselves well. A new team, new car, and a completely new driving style for them both. down, junction, immediate short, 6 left, don't cut. 80 down, portion junction, 6 left, immediate, don't cut. 30, 4 left, rock inside, 50, 7 left on crest, 7 right in, 80, 6 right, and 5 right over crest, 50, care bad, 3 left late, repeating care bad, 3 left late, 30, short, 4 left on crest, don't cut neat, 80, Break crest, 30 down, 2 left. Opens, 50. 5 right, over 50 long. Titans, 2 right. Repeat, over 50 long, Titans, 2 right. Not even the protective coating of his sponsor's product could help Steve McKenzie when the OptiCode Fiesta runs wide right. through a gate. Breaking into 2 left. 8 left, 8 right. Breaking into two oh, left. Whoa. Jesus. Shit. Co driver Ben Searcy is forced into extra duties for the remainder of stage. The official Ford entry of Adrian Coppin doesn't come out unscathed either. Rule of two. We're good. Right to loop, narrows don't cut. Coppen and Batten crab to the finish, but must complete another stage before reaching service. Super left six. Right five. 100 straight two, left six, 100 straight two. 
SS2, Mineshaft has an enviable reputation for creating havoc for rally cars. A massive drop of more than 30 metres, it must be approached with caution to avoid serious damage. Naturally, it attracts more than its fair share of enthusiastic onlookers. Chicane. Mineshaft, late 10 left on crest. Our wild man of rallying, Jack Monkhouse, tempers his throttle and guides the Nissan over the drop and onto seventh in stage. Into three left. Opens 100. Car has got no rear brakes at all. Four right, 30. About three k's to go. Works eight left. Into eight right over crest. Tighten 750. Turn two left. Break early, danger, press. 30, turn four left in, don't 30. Turn four left in, don't. Brendan Reeves' great start begins to unwind when brake fade causes him to overshoot. To make matters worse, without a fully functioning clutch, he is unable to grab first gear. The 45 second sideline is enough to drop him to 11th. Jump in. Get them on. Get them on. Eight right short in the seven left clay. But Reeves' issues are not as permanent as Elfin Evans. After a sensational start in the Pedder's power stage and second fastest across SS1 this morning, things go badly wrong for the visitors through the early stages of Mineshaft. Oh, no. Oh, I'm in big trouble now. Uh, we just slid wide, uh, coming up in a quite a fast section up there, and uh, there was a big rock lying in the in the ditch, and uh, basically that's ripped the rear wheel off and uh, sends us down here. We were enjoying ourselves. Uh, we'd had a good run through the first stage, um, having a good run here with with little drama, uh, but this just caught us out and uh, very disappointing. Slight crest, then break over crest, doubles 30, turn short left two, slip up. His namesake, Eli Evans, who started on the wrong tyres, suffers mechanical dramas halfway through the same stage. And left too late. Lost power steering. OK. 50, crest slip. I managed to hang on to the steering wheel for about five kilometres and then honestly I was physically exhausted so we had to actually slow down, make sure we finished the stage, see what the damage was, see where we were in the times and apparently we're about 17 seconds off the pace so I'm pretty happy with that. Evan's teammate hasn't been without issues as well. Like we had a bit of break at the start of the stage and we lost it halfway through coming to nine shaft and um, we just backed right off and dribbled through so frustrating start, scary start. While the 370Zs won't be ready until next round in WA, Nick Box can't wait to get behind the wheel, but for now he's doing his best in an old V8 Commodore. Hardly a world beater, but it is time behind the wheel, and it might just get him some valuable championship points. Lost a fair bit of power, and it didn't have a lot, mm -hmm. and um, losing brakes as well, so I'm just not used to driving old cars. Press 20, stay left barrier chicane, 20, shaft. It's a near thing for Scott Pedder in the Swiss Renault Sport entry over mine shaft. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we had a bit of a jump. Uh, they've put a stupid chicane before the mine shaft this year, which is just crazy. Um, and it pushes everyone to the wrong side. And, you know, you only have to be about uh, a foot wrong on coming on to, onto the mine shaft, and that's the result. So, you know, hopefully they learn for next year. Chicane breaking 30, danger, slight left over mine shaft. 30 left 5, 30 left 5. No problem for Pedder's teammate Tom Wilde safely over, 12 seconds slower than the sister car, but the West Australian is not concerned. Pretty consistent and conservative and no big moments in there and, and yeah, just trying to work our way up to, to be right on the pace with the other guys. 
The Hillary's Hotel Sylvia jumps to second outright. Orders needing to capitalise on any advantage she can. In this car we have to, we can't waste any time, you know, the, the front wheel drive cars are inherently faster. Um, we have to take every single opportunity we can to be as quick as possible because, you know, you give them a chance and all of a sudden you're, you're down 25 seconds, so, you know, really got to be on top of it. Getting on top of the issues with the Mazda 2 back in service is front and centre for Brendan Reeves, the rally school crew working overtime at service. We think it's a master cylinder uh, behind the clutch pedal, um, so the boys are trying to fix that now. Um, we think we can fix the one we've got in the car. Um, and then also we're locking the front brakes quite a lot and we overshot an intersection um, and then we couldn't get the car turned around because we were stuck into first and we didn't have the clutch to get it into neutral so we lost quite a lot of time and then we had to get back on the road and going again so I think it was 47 seconds to Peta puts us back into fifth now and it was a great start winning the first stage uh, with some issues as well so hopefully we can fix it now the boys are trying their best in this half an hour surface, uh, service and get back out there. Also in repair mode is Steve McKenzie, the Opticoat Fiesta hastily fitted with a spare door to satisfy scrutineers about the car's safety on the road. Last year's four-wheel drive champions Michael Bowden and Helen Cheers are quickly coming to terms with their new two-wheel drive VW and not unhappy with their sixth place overall. I'm actually ecstatic. I didn't expect to be up this high, you know. Life's good, isn't it? Uh, like, you know, at the end of the day, we're pretty happy in sixth place, um, you know, it's a long weekend to go. Some tough stages we've done this morning to, to learn to drive the car in. The Repco Polo run by Mick Patton is inside the top ten. Another four-wheel drive combatant making the switch to two-wheel drive. And it's not just teams making the switch in 2013. Major sponsor East Coast Bull Bars shifted up a gear with the ARC and that's put a smile on the face of managing director Ray Smith-Roberts. As I say, we got involved with the SUV side of it and we saw that that was a really good fit for what we do, but as we got to really understand the people and the sport and what was going on and being a mature business, we need to grow and diversify. We see the sports doing that, so it was a really good fit for us and so far, we, we think it's fantastic. Fantastic, all right. We'll be back in a moment for the rest of Heat 1. Welcome back to the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship coming to you from Canberra. Two days ago, the National Capital Rally was under serious threat, but Canberra's windy reputation confirmed that the roads would stand up to the rally and only one repeat stage was cancelled, SS3 and 6. So, teams are heading back to the repeat morning stages on roads that are drying out and firming up. Tyre choice and tyre pressures are critical parts of rallying as well as normal day-to-day -day driving. Cody Crocker explains why. How often do you check your tyre pressures on your road car at home? In rallying we'll check our tyre pressures anywhere up to about 10 times a day. We want to make sure that those tyres are running at the optimum performance and therefore the optimum tyre pressures. It's important to check your tyre pressures regularly and make sure they are running at the optimum pressure and therefore your tyres will get your maximum grip. It will also improve fuel economy uh, and keep you running on the road properly. If your car happens to be pulling from to the left or right, it's very possible that one of those tyre pressures is lower one side to the other. And that's why it's important that you check your tyre pressures every week. With Eli Evans on Kumo 800s and his power steering repaired, the Honda Pilot is keen to show what he can do. Trailing the Swiss Renault Sport by 17 seconds at the start, the Jazz G2 screams through SS4, eight clear of Penner. Entry, eight left, and eight left again, 50, six right and neat, 80, medium, three left. Scott Petter still holds the lead in his return right to rallying rest. after a three-year absence. Yeah, got, still got the lead, but uh, we dropped eight, so we're only ten in front now. Depending on what Will did. The car reacted a lot better to turn in and gave me a lot more confidence to push, so stage time was about 25 seconds faster, so keep going. Five right. Then a four left. 80. Five right, tightens long. Five right, tightens long. 180. 
The LG Polo can't keep going. The Warhol yeah. Warrior was keen to get to the finish of his first heat in a two-wheel drive. But the VW has other ideas and he's sidelined for 20 minutes. Uh, fuel rail uh, broke off from the injectors and fuel was going everywhere. So uh, by the time I've zip-tied it and MacGyvered it up, <laughs> we got it out of the stage, but we're going to pull the pins. Too much of a risk right? with, with race fuel. Anything could happen, so we'll go back and fix her and come back fighting tomorrow. Very slow, six left and five left. 50, five left, 50. Six left and seven right, six left and seven right, 50. Seven right on crest, tightens early to five. Seven right, tightens early to five, 50. Seven left, tightens early to four. Seven left, tightens early to four. And crest into oh. Steve McKenzie into clips there. a rock and bends a control arm, but Breaking finishes ahead of Mark Pedder, whose day is going from bad to worse. Still suffering from brake and clutch problems, Brendan Reeves has opted for whatever points he can muster out of heat one. Pedal's going to floor, so we're just driving through, changing the gears to slow us down a fair bit. The pedal's going to the floor, so I didn't get time to do my tyre pressures at the last stage. But because you can get championship points back to 20, we're just trying to get through and get some points for um, tomorrow, really, to fix the car tonight in the two hours. Four, three... Two, one, go. As is often the case, one problem leads to another. Completely broke. Right, and in a bid to get the Mazda 2 Probably off the line drive without shaft. a clutch, uh, a drive shaft breaks. 120, 10 right, slippy brake, yeah. early 50. Drive shaft. Maybe pull off here. Yeah. Oh, go under the tape. I'll just have a look first, yeah. With orders, dropped a place to Eli Evans through SS4 and through five, another to Tom Lyle. Like Eli this morning, Will made the decision at service to change to the 900 Kumos, banking on drier roads. Seven right, 100. Nine left, long, brow. Nine left, long, brow. Into eight right. 100. Brow 20. Seven left, seven right, 50. Nine left, 250. Flat left, 250. Eight right on brow, flat jump, 150. Flat jump, 150. Eight left, 20. What's this? Eight left, 20. 10 right, 100. Five left, 100. Wild, on the other hand, stays consistent and finishes the heat in third in his first appearance in the Renault Clio. Two left plus, entry, two right, entry, two left down, into five right, 30 down, turn one right plus, into six left, 30, Two right plus up, 50. Eight left over crest, 100. Crest 50. It's Wild's teammate who makes his mark though. 
15 seconds quicker this pass and holding off a desperate charge from Eli Evans, who is a massive 30 quicker on the Kumo 800s in the final stage of the day. Yeah, we took 11 out of orders. <laughs> it's not enough, though, to stop Scott Pedder winning his first heat after returning to competition. A personal yes. victory for him, but an earlier-than-expected win for Renault in their return to rallying after more than four decades. Eli Evans splits the two Team Renault Sport cars, while the Nissans of Orders and Monkhouse round out our top five in the first heat for 2013. Next, the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship heads east from Canberra to the famous Cowan Forest area for the second heat of the National Capital Rally. might be where all the decisions for the nation are made, but this weekend, the decision about just who will win the National Capital Rally will be made out in Cowan Forest. Great to be back in the seat, you know, they had a pretty easy day yesterday, which proves that the car is just incredibly good to drive, well set up, and it's got a great pedigree, and, but certainly today's a different day, you know, Brendo and, uh, and Eli, and, and particularly the Silvias will go well um, today, I think, so we'll push on and but keep the, uh, the bigger prize in mind, which is the championship at the end of the year. Yesterday was effectively our, our shakedown for a refresh to rebuild car, so a few niggling problems. We've ironed one of those major ones out and we've still got a, a few more to chase, but it, it's going to be a good weekend. Uh, the car went faultlessly yesterday um, and we are really looking forward to today's stages. Um, now we're just starting to get used to the car and, and driving it as in a two-wheel drive format rather than the four-wheel drive format. Um, but the last couple of stages yesterday, we were really happy with our progress for the morning, especially coming off the back of the, having a clutch issue, which... Uh, freed us up of a bit of time in the car as well. It's great, isn't it? You've got Brendan who's going fast, you've got the two Renaults pushing, they're first and third yesterday. I think the Nissans are going to be fast today and there's more competitors coming, so it's exactly what the championship needs. The Volkswagens, those guys are learning and they're learning pretty quick too, so you know, it's, it's fantastic. It's what Honda want, it's what I want, and it's, it's going really well. Seven stages make up heat two, a total of almost 100 kilometres of competition. The surface will be harder than heat one, but Mr Kumo, John Mills, reckons the majority will be on 800s. I'm expecting the same as I think what most of the cars should have done yesterday. I think most of them will go out on 800s this morning because it's loose gravel on the surfaces. And then this afternoon we'll see some of the top cars change to 900s to try to grab the edge on the dry roads. But Eli Evans has gambled again, running the 900s and hoping for a hard surface from the start. It works. The Honda Jazz doesn't look back. Short left, six bumps, 70. Short right, eight line, 150. Short right, eight, don't, into short left, seven. 50, left nine, break 30, turn right one up, hug. Left nine, break 30, turn right one up, hug. 50. Crest, 300. In a time of nine minutes, 42 seconds, Evans and Glenn Weston are five in front of Jack Monkhouse. 10 right over Crest, and eight left tight, seven over Crest. As predicted, the rear-wheel drive cars feature well over the longer straights, with the surface providing more grip. 120. Crest into eight left, 37 right, and eight left, and four right, 80. Nine right into eight left over crest, 35 right, 150. Straight crest, 200. Then straight crest, 100. 10 right into nine left over crest, 100. Then three right at the end, 100. Straight crest, 36 left, into 6 right, 150, turn 3 right, narrow exit, 600. Will Orders isn't able to capitalise. 
Despite a flying start, the engine in the Hillary's Hotel Nissan falters before the end of the first stage. No go. Yeah, we may as well stop, eh? She's three still under jobby now. Yeah. No use lunching at more. <laughs> Brendan Reeves powers the Mazda back into the Heat 2 competition. But Heat 2 is stopped when a wheel parts company with the car. Straight press. Turn two left plus flip. Scott Pitter misses the mark on a 90 left. 50. At this level of rallying, giving away vital seconds like this is your opposition's delight. He finishes just six seconds behind the stage winner. Blind, turn two right. Repeat, blind, turn two right. 50. Eight left, in, into, bump on left, 200. Nine right, clip, flat crest, 200. Caution, don't cut, narrow, eight right over crest, entry, seven left. An unusual starter in the ARC outright this weekend is local Peter Kobold. Driving a V8 XE Falcon Ute, Kobold has been keeping the bottom of the leaderboard company, but pushes on through SS7 to beat five drivers to the finish, including Michael Logan. With an emphasis on finishing, Bowden runs mid-pack through the morning. An event finish in his first outing in the LG Polo is what he and Helen Cheers are after. Scott Petter is just 0.4 of a second behind Eli Evans through River Road. Eli Evans, who is disappointed not to be competing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very disappointed to be here watching the cars go by and, and not be taking part today, but unfortunately the damage was done by, by ourselves yesterday. We were brought out to, to show the potential of the Fiesta R2. It's a car that we've been competing in now for two years. Um, and Inic Motorsport have been running the car now this year with Adrian. Um, and they wanted some of the experience just to show uh, you know, the potential of the car um, against much more expensive and powerful cars. And uh, I think we managed to do that. Adrian Coppen has been unable to match the time set by Elfin, but the Ford Innate Motorsport driver has plenty to learn. Yeah, look, it's certainly set the benchmark. Uh, it's good for me to know what the car is capable of doing. Um, I've been talking to Elvin a lot during the week um, and you know, just finding you know, little tricks into the trade, I guess, with these cars. Uh, and it's going to be a big learning curve again for this year, um, but it's definitely set the benchmark so I know what the car is capable of doing and that's what we've got to strive towards now. Millpost Lane is the final stage before service. The top three remain unchanged. Evans, Penner and Monkhouse, all within five seconds, continue to clear out from the field. Tom Wilde and Mark Pedder are next quickest, although a moment near the end of nine for Pedder could have been costly.
Wilde, on the other hand, was cautious. His move to a different suspension setup isn't working, and he's losing ground to the lead three cars. He and Bill Hayes also have a moment mid stage. 100. Nice save. 100. Flat brow. 150. Turn right, 6 plus. Turn right, 6 plus. Straight 120. Right four, medium. Right four, medium. 90. Flat brow, 120. Dip, and right entry, left six. Dip, and right entry, left six. Here's your dip, right entry, left six. 50. Long flat brow, 150. Left 150, left six, narrow exit in. Back in Canberra, there is plenty of chat about potential changes for the final afternoon stages. All of that will be gone in just a moment. leave service for the final time bound for Cowan Forest. But before that, there's a stage at Blewitts using some of the same roads as the Pedders Power stage two days ago. 200. Flat brow. 200. Two more moments for Scott Pedder and Dale Moskett through SS10. Nine left on bumpy crest. That's it. That's it. 100, bumpy that was seven. A right. error. Yep. Bumpy seven, right? 100. The Heat one winners are lucky to finish just two seconds behind the Honda, but the potential of the Swiss Renault is clear. Evans and Weston will be kept on their toes this season. 200. Down. Four right. Right down. Four right. 100. Care down. One right plus over crest. 30. Nice and neat down this school. Nice and neat on this next section. Four left. Six right on crest. Don't cut. Entry, five left. Entry, five right. Once again, Jack Monkhouse and John Allen are in touch. This time, just one tenth of a second behind Pedder. And that, despite nearly ripping right, a wheel off the left, extreme 50. clutch Nissan. Turning to your left here, 50. Oh, what was in there? I don't know. 10 left on crest, 100. Straight crest, keep left hole, 30. Then crest into 7 right hole, 100. I think this is a 7 right hole up here, 100. Changing the suspension settings back lifts Tom Wilde's times and he separates himself from Mark Pedder, eager to chase down the faster cars. Mark Pedder's issue is the personal battle with McPatton. The Repco VW is just 0.1 of a second behind the Honda across the 12k stage. Back at Cowan Forest, the final three stages are repeat runs of the morning. Brendan Reeves has all four wheels working again on the Mazda 2 and rejoins at SS11. With no chance of winning, he and sister Rhiannon Smythe aim to finish and gain more experience with the new car. It's a new experience for Scott Petter too, when he's forced to drive the 16 kilometres with the dust billowing throughout the car. Why is it so loud? Left, 200. Boots open, I think. 200, 10 right in. 300. Early break crest 50, turn two left plus clip. It's where we overshot. Break crest 50, turn two left plus clip. I think maybe the tyre guys didn't do the bloody shot, the rib. You're f***ing joking me, aren't you? He and Moskett finish five seconds behind Eli Evans, but it's a struggle to concentrate with the distraction of the flailing boot lid randomly opening and closing. The finish line can't come soon enough. Evans and Weston catch a whisper that the Renault team might claim compassionate time for the official's indiscretion and decide their 30-second buffer could be in jeopardy. 
They press on through SS12, but clip a rock and puncture toward the end of stage, dropping valuable time. Short left 10, a right 7. So I just come in on this crest and just, just nicked a rock. I saw it there, but it's nothing I can do about it. And we just got it, flat tyre, and lost a bit of time at the end, but um, we'll see if it was enough. I don't know how much I lost. Luck is playing into their hands, though. Pedder and Moskett hit the same rock. Flat left. They make the final two Ks to the finish, but hand the stage win to Brendan Reeves. Mark Pedder is fourth equal in his best performance for the weekend, just four seconds off the lead pace. He and Claire Ryan are having a faultless drive and really starting to enjoy their Honda Jazz. Tom Wilde matches the time of the Honda, but is pushing right to the end. Right narrow exit into right two, Titans. Uh, it's not the best spot to do that. Right two, Titans three. Less than five seconds covers the top seven cars through SS12. Monkhouse is just 0.1 behind Wilde and Pedder, and Michael Bowden is 0.3 behind the extreme clutch Nissan. Adrian Coppin's Ford Innate Fiesta is 16 seconds behind the first group of cars. Consistent, if not fast enough all day, Coppin and Batten finish the penultimate stage of the day ahead of Steve McKenzie. To far seven right, 100. Evans and Pedder might not have dislodged the rogue rock earlier, but McKenzie and Searcy give it a good shot. Seven, oh. seven right. Everyone seems to have missed the partially obscured obstacle during recce as it claims its third puncture. Pedder and Moskett are neck and neck with Monkhouse and Allen for second place in heat, coming into the final stage of the day. All that action in just a few moments. Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. With just one stage remaining, Eli Evans has a slender lead over Jack Monkhouse and Scott Pedder, who will fight it out for a heat second. Tom Wilde's dream to bring the Renault home and bag some early championship points doesn't come to fruition. After a consistent performance all weekend, he and Bill Hayes exit on a corner that almost caught them the first time through. All they can do is watch on as the competition drives past. The Renault is undamaged, but beached. They can't get going. They finally get free, but it's a bittersweet end to what has been a great start to their championship. He did seven minus left hub, left hub medium, 30 turn, three right, 30 turn, three right. Brendan Reeves is happy to make the finish in what's been an eventful weekend of rallying. 200. Yeah, we certainly know what the car can do and from the power stage and some of the other times we set yesterday morning, but just disappointing really for the service crew as well. But we pushed on and we got through the last three stages, so that's good and it's pretty rough in there. And Eli and Scott have been battling out at the front, so I'm excited for the next round in Perth. Fast press six left. The Warhope Warrior finishes the heat in fifth and is very pleased to be here. We're really wrapped to finish today, you know. We're still shorting out little, uh, you know, niggling problems and trying to get the handle the way we want it. And uh, yeah, look, we'll go back after this now. and We know where we've, we've got to work on it. and Change the suspension for a start and then go right the way through the car and we'll be coming out firing at Western Australia, hopefully. Heat leader Eli Evans pushes right to the end, unsure of the result of Peter's compassionate time and taking no chances. Finish 50, left five. Yep. Could not go any faster than that. <laughs> Well done, mate. Good job, mate. He is 15 seconds in front of the next car, but it's not Pedder, it's Monkhouse, and he and John Allen are on a charge to hold on to second. Yeah, we're very happy. Today was, was going to be known that suited our cars. We've got a lot more top speed and, and much better suited for the flowing stuff. Plus, my driving is all about fast driving, big skids, and, and having some fun. So, the roads yesterday were very narrow, and you couldn't really throw the car around as much as I liked. But, um, yeah, we're here, we're finished, and it's great to be at the end of an event. Black press 200, it was 7 right over Brow. We can cut straight across the 
Play right. crest 200 now. Yep, seven right over Brow. Just cut through there. On clock, they finish in front of the Renault, but the score sheet will reveal an allowance for Petter's issue with the boot lid, and the extreme clutch entry from South Australia will drop to third right. in heat. Last time. Yep, it's good. I was missing all the rocks. Yeah, you had to, mate. You had to. Didn't I say this was an easy day yesterday? It's been a hard one today. We uh, scrutineers left the boot open on the tyre yeah. marking, uh, and then the cabin filled with dust, and we had an overshoot, um, and then a flat tyre. <laughs> we, we had everything, so, but I think we're still second for the rally. So, Evans and Weston snatch the second heat for the weekend and the championship. Scott Petter hangs on for second in a close battle with Jack Monkhouse, while his brother Mark brings the Honda home in fourth for the day. An ecstatic Michael Bowden makes the final five. In championship terms, the defending champion holds the early lead from a whirlwind return to rallying from Scott Petter. The extra points from the power stage and the bonus for most stage wins making the difference. Jack Monkhouse is third on 53 points, with Mark Petter and Tom Wilde rounding out the top five in the championship. Honda takes the lead in the manufacturer stakes ahead of Renault, but it's early days. As the National Capital Rally winds to a close, the scene has been set for an exciting year ahead in the East Coast Bull Bars Australian Rally Championship. And it continues next round in WA at the Quit Forest Rally. We'll see you there.